A modern-day head unit of an in-car entertainment system can often control lots of different audio parameters, but it wasn't long ago that your car had to be filled with different boxes that did different jobs. In those early days, you would have your radio, and to uh, enhance the sound support, performance you would buy an equalizer booster something like this these these products we were making in the late 70s early 80s and these were really the business if you had one of these you were really someone on the street and this type of product has really gone out now but it, through its evolution it went from this to very much more sophisticated products uh, like this one and uh, they all did the same thing. They took the 6 watt output from your set and boosted it to 2 by 25 watts. Sound quality has moved on uh, leaps and bounds um, over the last 10 years in car audio because the car, car is a difficult place to get a good sound but engineers have worked very hard developing speakers and the amplifiers within the unit to make it sound, well, <laughs> as good as it gets really. But this is a typical radio cassette of the early 80s. It weighs a great deal compared to today. That moved through to products like this, and this I guess was, is really a milestone. This was a 3015 computer graphic equalizer, and this product, you would press the button here, it would then emit pink noise into the car, its microphone sensors would pick up exactly the interior acoustics of the vehicle and set the equalization so that it was perfect tonal balance for the car. If the technology of the actual sourcing and amplification hardware has improved, so has the understanding of acoustics so that you get the best possible sound in a car, especially that holy grail heavy bass. If you require low bass in your car, this is what you'll need. The average customer will get a 12 inch sub this is a Rockford punch subwoofer. Once a customer's chose this, we need to make the best sound with the best size of boot space that we have available. To do this, we'd use this computer, which is Term Pro. This computer enables us to match the car to the subwoofer, i.e. to make the box, whether it be a small one or a big one, depending on boot size, match the subwoofer to get the optimum sound. We input the information of the subwoofer, we input the information of the box size. We then have a look at the frequency response. And if it is a good response, that's it. If we can make the box slightly bigger or slightly smaller to get us a better sound, this enables us to try and get the best before we go and do the box. There's no point in aiming at hi-fi sound if you're playing from a lo-fi analog audio cassette. That's why now digital formats are so important, and the best medium for the future seems to be the re-recordable mini-disc. As far as we're concerned in Europe, it has come to uh, our shores relatively late. Um, the role that mini-disc will perform, and the one that will probably make it the replacement for compact cassette, is the fact that you can record your CD collection onto a mini-disc, in whatever order, whatever uh, material you want to have. So it's ready, it's easy, it's, it, it's in a very robust uh, format and you can store many of these within the car safely. So it's got a lot of major attributes. Um, I'm sure that uh, its future role will be to replace the compact set and it will then run alongside CD which you'll have either in the car or in your home collection and mini disc for your own compilation which you can take anywhere. Mini disc first came in five years ago. Um, it came in with a whimper. We were quite disappointed really because it was obviously the format of the future. Um, it replaced the cassette as a, a recordable digital format. Um, fortunately, the last 12 months it's come very strong. We get probably three enquiries a day for it now. But this, just the size of the mini disc, it's a big advantage. You can have 10 mini discs in your car and no space, and it, as I said, you can keep recording over it. Great sound in the car is very difficult to achieve unless you reduce noises such as motor, tyre and wind noise. 
This is where special adhesive soundproofing is essential. Soundproofing is very important within a car for two reasons. One is to stop the noise when you're driving along, but the most important one is to, to make the sound better. And what happens here is when you put your speaker to the door, when it's playing, it vibrates into the panel and then the vibration comes back into the speaker. And this can colour or even make the sound terrible. Dynamat is the product that we use. We stick this onto the panels. This stops the vibration, gives a nice solid area to mount the speakers to, which helps them to produce the sound a lot better and also kills the road noise within the car and makes it a lot nicer to drive. So you've got the soundproofing you need, the system you want. You just need the right sort of car to show it all off in. In for a penny, in for a pound, you might as well splash out on a Lambo. So we'll just set up the, uh, the navigation system and uh, we can see here that uh, we're sitting in Milton Keynes and I put in the Granada offices in Key Street, Manchester and I also put a waypoint in uh, for Brighton. So you can see this uh, is the whole of the United Kingdom and uh, we'll get on our way. The value of the car is around 130,000 and uh, our equipment along with its installation it'll probably be six or seven thousand pounds. Because obviously we uh, have to have everything put into the car. We have satellite uh, tweeters on the dashboard. We have midwoofers at the bottom of the doors. We have uh, rear speakers. I know it's a two-seater car, but so that we can get our time alignment correct, we use a four-speaker set up in order to do that. So we have speakers in the rear, and we also have a subwoofer, in fact, a pair of subwoofers, so that we have the base reinforcement that you would expect in a high quality audio system. You don't need to have a large car to have an impressive system installed. The BMW Z3 is a two-seater roadster with hardly any decent storage areas, but that's no problem to the experts. We have one of the biggest amplifiers and three 8-inch subwoofers, all in a very small area, as you'll see. As you can see, small boot, big amplifier, three big subwoofers. Also allowing access to the navigation system and other components, everything has to be hinged. Once the system's been done, we like to re-trim everything in the original carpet to make it look as if it come from the factory, make nice covers for the amplifier, so it all finishes it off as if it would be from the factory. As you can see, the Phoenix Gold Reactor is a big amplifier. It consists of two amps in one heat sink, one of only 500 made for the whole of the world. Each amplifier in there produces nearly 1,000 watts. Half of it is on the 3 8 the other half is on the left and the right hand speakers with their own crossovers for high and low pass. Limited edition amps? What sort of people actually buy these high end systems? True music lovers or pure posers? The customers that come into the shop wide range from the person that just wants a head unit because he's fed up of uh, the, the standard one or wants a CD player right the way through to people that have got thousands of pounds worth of hi-fi systems at home and want that quality system in their car and they're the people that will spend thousands on amplification and proper speakers. The type of people who saw it going down any high street with the bass boom, I mean, bless them, they're customers of ours and you know we do, th we do those systems but our target audience really or market is 25 to 45, 50 year olds where they just want to enhance the music in the car or the quality of the sound in the car. If you have a new car and thinking about installing a system, how would you feel about your precious car being pulled apart to get it installed? Breaking things in a car when you take it to pieces, it does happen. But the more you take to pieces, the more ideas you get of where the screws will be hidden behind panels, how to pull a panel off without breaking it. But most cars are built these days to be serviced very easy and they do come apart.
But how does it affect the warranty situation? Your car warranty will not be invalid if you don't cut any wires. And we have special plugs that connect A to the vehicle's wiring and then to our radios. And the rest of it we put in and we do not affect any of the car's wiring. So then, yeah, you do not invalidate any warranties. Here's another great show car. This time it's from Kenwood. Well, there's no spare wheel in here, but there's over 7,000 watts of audio power firing into 16 10-inch subwoofers. What the hell is the point? Well, it's at the point of today is the fad that, that we're seeing is DB drag racing. This is where two cars will actually fight it out to see whose is the loudest. And this car, if it was in those competitions, would beat them all. So what does 7,000 watts mean in reality? Well, it's uh, probably louder than Concorde taking off. And physically, it's a problem as well, because the first time we turned this car on, being new to us, this window actually flew out, the pressure from within the car. So now this is a completely false panel with a wooden panel behind, and we always open the sunroof before we turn the system on. It must be shaking the car to bits, isn't it? Luckily, Volkswagens are very strong, but it is starting to show the signs of uh, flexing, shall we say, about the seams. At the end of the day, virtually anything is possible, and ICE installers do get some unusual requests. We've got one at the moment. It's um, a big system in the back of a, an estate car, and all he's interested in is letting us build the system round the baby's pushchair. The pushchair is the ultimate. It's got to be in the boot, and the system has got to be built round it. And as long as we can get it in there, he'll be happy.